So thanks everyone for coming along. Um, today, myself, uh, I'm Louise Alexander and um, my colleague, Julie, we're going to talk about our um, postgraduate studies at ACU. So I'll introduce myself first. Um, so my name's Louise Alexander. I'm the course coordinator for the Masters of Mental Health and Mental Health Nursing here at ACU. Um, and so I've been overseeing this program for about four years now. Um, and I also teach into the program too. So um, hopefully get to meet some of you. Julie? Yeah, hi, my name's Julie Hughes. I'm a lecturer in occupational therapy based in Brisbane on the Brisbane campus. I have, um, last year was my first year teaching into the postgraduate um, mental health studies and I have really enjoyed it. And I'm hoping to build a bit more interest there in terms of allied health students. I teach into the undergraduate um, mental health units for our occupational therapy students. And I worked in mental health, um, firstly in Australia and then over in the UK for quite some time in a lot of different settings. So I really love meeting with um, postgraduate students because you have such a wealth of experience. So it's, um, it's something dear to my heart. You did a much better um, <laughs> introduction than I did. I don't even think I said, <laughs> said what the background is. Um, I'm also um, a senior lecturer in mental health nursing here at ACU uh, and I teach into the undergraduate program, mental health only, uh, and obviously the postgraduate program. Uh, I also work in um, research two days a week with the Northwestern Mental Health Nursing Research Unit in ACU, um, getting some good outputs there at the moment. So, um, yeah, really, I'm kind of really invested in research. So hopefully some of you take the research path. Um, cool. All right. Oh, that didn't work very well, did it? You go, Julie, that one's you. Uh, I can't see it yet. Is it moved? Oh. Let me try this way. Can you see it? It's still on the same screen for me, still on the first one. Really? What does that mean? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's weird because it's moved. So it's still on that um, adjoining page for me. Oh, so you can't even see the PowerPoint. I can see the PowerPoint, but just I'm still on the first slide. That's all. How weird. Okay, I'll stop sharing and I'll start again. I don't know why it's doing that. Um, I need to share the desktop instead. Is that better? Yep. Well, I can see all your oh. open. Uh, no, that's not better then. Um, that's weird. I don't understand why it's doing that because I could, it's right for me. Yeah, but I'm not sorry, just bear with me. All right, let me try. Is that better? Can you see the PowerPoint now? But I can still see all your open tabs too. So you can't see the PowerPoint? I can. Sorry, I can see the PowerPoint. It's just not on the right view and I can see all your open tabs. Is that better? Yep. Can you see the second slide now? I can now, yep. Great. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I didn't do anything different. <laughs> no, no. Okay, so um, in terms of a welcome to the Australian Catholic University, ACU. So these um, this uh, program is um, has uh, is fully accredited by the Australian College of Mental Health Nurses, and I know that's really important um, for you guys um, in the who have a nursing background and are wishing to um, to go further in your career. So all degrees from graduate diploma onwards result in education, the educational component of credentialing. So um, that is something that um, is really important to, to know. Um, there is also um, an incentive if you have graduated from ACU in the past, there's a postgraduate alumni rebate of 10%. So that one's also handy to know. 
Uh, this uh, program is fully online, is a 12 week semester, and um, we uh, facilitate as much contact as possible between students, but it's uh, online so that it's convenient for you. And we know that um, a lot of postgraduate students find it much easier to schedule their work um, and their study uh, when they can actually uh, look at the um, look at the study components um, in your own time, basically. Sorry, I'm getting a bit flustered now as well. Um, ACU is within the top 3% of universities worldwide. And um, another financial incentive for you is that the places on the um, program are fully, or we have fully um, uh, Commonwealth supported places. So that really helps with the funding. And I'm sure you'll say a bit more about that, Louise, because there was some good news for allied health students as well, that that was actually coming into the fold as well. So this started with, um, uh, uh, CSPs for mental health nurses, and now we've got it for allied health students as well. So that's very good news. Thanks, Julia. Yeah, it makes a big difference, a, a big financial difference. Mm. Um, okay. Oh, God. Is that moved? Yes. Okay, good. Um, all right. So well, there are um, two streams. It's, it can be a little bit complicated to understand, but essentially we have an allied health stream, which is anyone who has an allied health degree or a health related degree. It could be psychology or um, counselling or um, OT, social work, um, or anything that might be health related that um, I can approve as course coordinator. Uh, and then we have a nursing stream, which is pretty clear. It's got to, got to be a registered nurse, Division One. Um, and everyone sort of converges into those same um, units together with separate, I guess, separate course codes. So we have a graduate certificate in mental health and mental health nursing, graduate diploma in mental health and mental health nursing, masters of mental health and mental health nursing. Um, we're in the process of changing our art articulation pathways into um, PhDs, which is really good. There's some discussions around uh, the nursing and mental health stream being able to be eligible for a PhD from the masters, which is a, actually a big change because we didn't have that before. Um, and so we're trying to obviously recruit students who are interested in a research pathway, which is very good. Um, but yeah, you, if you if you wanted to do a PhD uh, or a prof doc, there there are pathways there too. It was always going to be a stepping stone, though, wasn't it? If people start into um, further study, if you get your teeth into postgraduate um, study, then it's always likely that you might think, oh, masters and Perhaps I'll move on to a PhD. So yes, do keep that in mind. So this one's me again. So in terms of um, the allied health stream for mental um, allied health student stream for mental health, the requirements um, are, as Louise mentioned, that you would already have a bachelor degree in something which is relevant to the study of mental health. So that could be um, from the list here in terms of occupational therapy, could be psychology, social work, counselling, exercise science, um, or nurses who don't necessarily meet um, the quite strict criteria for nursing entry, which um, would be good to discuss with Louise. And if you have an interest, then it's worthwhile inquiring. So I think um, people have come from education backgrounds. It depends on your qualifications and your um, your kind of destination as well. So I think it's worth having the conversation. If you think that this is something that you'd like to study, then it's best to have the conversation with Louise. Um, you do need, though, some written confirmation from your employer that you're actually working with people who are experiencing mental health challenges. Um, that makes it far more relevant to the work you're doing. But I know we've um, had people working in forensic or prison settings as well. So there's a lot of different places where you could be working with people who are experiencing mental health issues. So as I say, just um, just ask. That's the, the best. But um, yeah, we do have to have some restrictions. Great. Um, yeah, so in terms of the nursing entry requirements, uh, you need a bachelor degree in nursing or if you're old school trained, so hospital trained, you need to obviously demonstrate your R or everyone needs to demonstrate RPRO registration. Um, but the entry pathway, if you are if you don't have a bachelor degree is uh, a little bit more complicated. You have to contact me, put in an application and then we have to get it approved a little bit higher up, but usually that shouldn't be a problem. 
um, you need to be employed as a mental health nurse in an approved mental health service. Um, generally speaking, this covers private and public sector. The only issue I often find, sorry, that's my email. Only issue I often find is um, people working in residential aged care outside of a psychogeriatric unit. Uh, it doesn't meet our requirements with the Australian College of Mental Health Nurses for creden credentialing. So you can still do the degree, but if you're working in aged care outside of sort of psychiatric specific services, um, you'd have to do the non-nursing stream. We, do, we um, have very strict, they have very strict criteria about what can be um, accredited because of the credentialing. Uh, and as Julie said, you need written confirmation from your employer. The university provides a, a, a form in the application process called a STEM, a statement of employment. It's just literally a tick the box um, form. You get your um, director of nursing or whoever it is, in, you know, overseeing your supervision to sign off on it. Be very clear about the service that you work with. Um, you know, obviously, we're an Australian university, so I have to try and um, look up a lot of these services to, to check that they meet our requirements. But um, so the more information you can give, the better. Right. OK, so in terms of employment pathways, so taking forward your postgraduate studies, uh, there are a lot of different ways in which you may take that. So it may be that you're looking, and I'm kind of talking here generally across both areas, looking at leadership and management roles, looking at uh, specialist clinical roles, where you would be improving your confidence and your competence uh, for contemporary mental health practice. So um, a lot of people who have studied some time ago, their first degree, um, may not have... Um, uh, may have studied mental health as it was um, and have not studied more contemporary approaches like the recovery approach. So it's a really good way to update your um, clinical understanding, your policy, um, your understanding of contemporary Australian mental health policy. So that can take you into a lot of different areas, which could be research. It could be specific areas of practice. So I've put up here forensic mental health. So again, in those prison um, um, settings for allied health more um, into um, private practice and work with the NDIS as well so I'm jumping around here a little bit but um, it's a way of increasing your confidence to work with people with mental health issues and um, we know that this is um, a huge area of development and um, a huge demand area for working with people with mental health issues. So you can take um, your studies forward in, you know, as many directions as you're motivated to do so. So it could be education, could be further research, as we've mentioned before. Um, it could be just improving your ability to mentor others, to supervise others. Um, or as I say, much more in that specific, this is the kind of particular area I want to work in. Um, so I really want to hone my skills. I want to upskill. I want to show that I have um, studied recent um, mental health practice. So a whole range of different ones there. Great, thank you. Um, in terms of the course design, there are multiple different uh, exit points is probably the best way of looking at it. Um, obviously, there's entry points are different too, but it's usually the exit points that we look at. Um, so the graduate certificate is the, uh, I guess, the foundational core degree where all those core units, um, mental health context units sit. So there's actually five, uh, even though the graduate certificate's four units, there's five um, mental health units that come across the grad cert and the grad dip. Um, so we look at the graduate certificate as the foundational um, core concepts. And then we look at um, the graduate diploma as the leadership sort of pathway, I guess, is one way of looking at it. There's more um, leadership elements within that degree. And then the master has uh, research um, focus or project work. So there's, you know, you can see that there's scaffolded sort of um, design, I guess, is probably the way to look at it. Only the graduate diploma and the master level um, courses are accredited by the Australian College of Mental Health Nurses in terms of uh, the educational credentialing component. 
Um, so as Julie said, we're looking at, um, I mean, our, our course differs from other courses because it's much more contemporary, um, which is why we're one of the very few um, degrees that are, credent are covered by the Australian College of Mental Health Nurse. They have very um, clear guidelines and practice, practice frameworks that sort of fit under what is going to be an acceptable mental health course. Most universities don't meet that because they're often still very um, dealing with, uh, I guess, teaching things that are probably not as contemporary. We don't look at pharmacology. We don't look at legislation. We look at recovery. We look at trauma-informed care practices. We look at clinical supervision and CBT. It's a very different structured course. Um, but it's well suited to grads and experienced nurses too. So it kind of complements both. Um, so we're looking at, I guess, improving the outcomes for consumers who are using mental health services. Um, yeah. Great. Did you want me to mention this one? Yep. Okay. So these are the core units that everybody's required um, to complete within the program. Uh, so as Louise has mentioned there, we're looking at contemporary mental health practice, which is recovery focused, which is trauma informed, which is about ensuring that we are aware of um, the priorities for our mental health consumers and that we um, are able to work as collaborative mental health practitioners. So our units follow with that approach. So we're looking uh, and each of these has, um, as we mentioned before as well, they have a code for the nursing students and a code for the allied health students, but you are taught together um, in across any of the units. Um, so we're looking at providing culturally safe and holistic recovery oriented care. We're looking at um, being able to evaluate um, and uh, address the relationship between mental health and physical health, being aware of the social inequalities that are experienced by people with um, uh, mental health issues and obviously particular groups um, in particular, like Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and those um, very differing health outcomes, um, encouraging you to improve and um, uh, to move forward the depth of your reflection. So to um, reflect at a deep, deeper level. So it's certainly something that you do and are encouraged to do in your undergraduate study, but it's nothing like what happens at postgraduate. You have got so much um, experience um, to reflect on yourself and also the interactions with your fellow students. So we're um, moving you um, into the, a greater depth in terms of your reflective practice, um, thinking about clinical supervision, either as a supervisor or as a supervisee and how we can get more out of that. Um, supervision relationship. Um, very much recovery focused. And this is the unit that I have taught into last year and will be teaching into again this year. Yay. Um, so very excited about that. So this is the crux of the matter, being recovery orientated and trauma informed, um, backed by the policy and the evidence and the consumer um, priorities. We know that recovery oriented practice is the ideal. It's not always happening out there in practice, but we have to be part of the solution um, and not perpetuating um, outdated ways of practicing in, in mental health settings. So um, there are challenges, you know, the course challenges you to think and reflect on your own practice and the services in which you work um, and to look at how you can be part of improving those services and updating and improving your own practice. Um, and also thinking about CBT, we know um, cognitive behavioral therapy is one of the most commonly used um, therapeutic and psychological interventions. So how can we use those principles and skills in our practice as um, either mental health nurses or um, allied health practitioners? Um, again, to um, you know, offer an, another tool 
um, in our toolbox in terms of how we actually work with people. So overall, these core units are really um, encouraging you to interact with each other as students, but also to reflect on where you are right now and how you're going to move forward in terms of your practice and, you know, improvements in your team and your service. So there's also that kind of impact factor of taking forward new theory, new evidence um, into your organisation as well. So I can't say enough about um, how useful um, this knowledge and, and theory is. Great, thanks. Will. Um, so in terms of the graduate certificates, uh, we have, uh, um, as Julie said, these, we have a stream of mental health and a stream of mental health nursing with different prefixes in the codes and some of the numbering is slightly different too, uh, which just likes to add a layer of confusion. <laughs> for us, not for you guys, but for us, it can be challenging. Um, so you can see here that the these two, so semester two units are obviously on the left, you can see where, when these units are running. Um, so the graduate certificate, you have a maximum of two years to complete four units. And as course coordinator, my advice is usually to just start with one unit per semester. Um, it's a significant amount of hours if you're going to do everything that you're asked to do. Um, you know, it's 150 hours of study in that 12 weeks. So it's, you know, in order to achieve the greatest success, it's probably better to start off with just one. If you find that you're really doing really well, um, you can pick up other subjects in the following semester. Um, but yeah, we've, our suggestion is to just stick with one. So you can see here there's four units. So provided that you follow the nomenclature of a graduate certificate, even if you're doing a master's. So this is the thing, if you're doing a master's, you're best to take the grad cert level units, then the grad dip, then the master's, so that if you need to exit at any point, you can exit with, a, with an actual degree rather than if you kind of cherry pick your units to fit your interests, I guess, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that if you've done 70, for example, 70 credit points that you'll have enough to do to, to have a graduate certificate, which is only 40 credit points because you have to do the 40 credit points that are there. So you can't sort of cherry pick. Um, it can be a bit confusing, but all you have to do is email me and I'll give you a course map, and, you know, help you pick things. And, you know, most students do touch base with me at some point just to get some course advice, just, you know, it's, it's a two second job for me to um, send you an email and tell you which is the best pathway to take. Um, it gets, a, when I was writing this, I, when I got to the masters, I realized this is a very complicated, uh, I tried to simplify this, but it's actually really complicated. Um, but as you can see here, these, so these four units, uh, at the front end are the graduate certificate level units. And then the ones below are the uh, graduate diploma adding levels. And then the next layer of complexity is the research units because there are separate pathways. There's what we call the project pathway. And then there's the research pathway. Um, so you've got very distinct uh, research pathway there where you either do choose to do a qualitative um, unit or a quantitative unit. And sorry, you've got four years to complete um, that. So again, you can still do one unit a semester. The whole degrees, all the degrees um, can be managed with just one unit a semester. And the masters, which is even more complicated. Um, again, we have grad cert units at the front end, the graduate diploma level sitting in the middle there. And then at the bottom part of that table, you've got all the, um, the uh, uh, sorry, the master's level units. So that, that research pathway, and you don't have to choose which pathway you, if you're doing a master's, you don't have to choose until quite late in the degree. Um, and certainly if you are going down the research pathway, you need a GPA that's high enough. So you need a, so the GPA is basically the average of what your units are. You need probably at least a distinction to a high distinction average for every unit to be able to enter the research pathway. So it's, it's not usually always attainable for most students. Um, often if you have a high GPA and you're enrolled in the mental in the masters I might tap you on the shoulder and suggest that you go down the research pathway um, because obviously you know your writing is probably suggestive of being having a greater chance of success the project um, is what we call this the independent project or the nursing project depending on which stream you're in 
um, is a what we would probably call a QA. So it's a, a quality sort of appraisal or a quality investigation into a tool, for example, that you might be using in your health service or where you work. Um, it doesn't involve human ethics. Um, so it's a different type of project. Once you look at the um, other research pathways, you tend to be looking at human ethics. So it, it gets quite um, more researchy, more complicated. Um, but as I said, you don't have to make that um, decision for ages. Um, six years to complete. Um, I should also mention that if you've done, done a um, graduate year with a health service, you may be eligible for credit, uh, particularly in those grad cert level units. We have quite a few affiliated agreements with health services um, for credit. So just contact me and I can tell you whether or not I know for certain whether your health service has an agreement with us. Um, if I don't, we can accredit, you know, I can look into whether you're eligible for credit. You would have to provide uh, official transcript of your grad program that you're doing uh, or previous studies. Um, you would also need to provide, essentially what I really need to see is the learning outcomes because that's what I map against it. So the learning outcomes need to map to 80% to what we're teaching here as well. You can bulk up several units to get one. Um, and so a lot of people who are doing a, a standard graduate program will be eligible for some type of credit. Um, you obviously have to pass the grad program. So if you're doing a grad program, and um, are hoping to get credit, you can let me know what it is and show me all the documents and I can give you a course map that means you won't end up doing a subject that you'd likely to get credit for because that's painful too. You don't want to spend money doing a unit or time that you're actually eligible for credit for. So it's worth contacting me about that. This is back to me. So what do I need to do? So if you are interested and if you do enrol, um, obviously as an online um, program, it's a, um, about um, engaging with our online um, uh, technology. So we have something called our learning environment online, Leo. So we host our materials there and um, we may ask you to write um, posts within that format or we might have um, some meetings which are face to face but in the online environment as well which could be zoom um, so I know that that's one of the things that people are a little bit worried about sometimes is that use of, of technology and um, that's just something to become familiar with and you know we do give you as much support as we can um, with accessing those materials um, but then it's also self-directed so that is the beauty of, um, of being online is that there are very few expectations of when we would actually be expecting your time. Um, we will um, make that very clear when and um, if we are expecting um, people to, to come together with us um, and with other students, but most of it will be self-directed. So you'll be working your way through any readings or course materials, any um, prompts to reflect on um, different aspects of your practice, of aspects of um, mental health um, approaches, theory, um, evidence that's out there, videos to watch, um, lots of different ways of trying to provoke you to consider the different concepts, the theory, the evidence that's out there within um, contemporary mental health practice. So as Louise mentioned, usually about 150 hours per study per unit per semester. So it is quite a big commitment. So you do need to think about that balance between work and study and life. Um, so it's really thinking about how you can fit it in. You know, are you the morning person, are you the evening person? How are you going to um, uh, actually cope with this? You know, getting those assessments in on time and getting them into your diary so you actually know when your assessments are due is a crucial part of your time management and organisation. So you are required to pass um, the assessments um, and to submit to... Um, dates that we'll set for you and essentially we'll be trying to um, encourage you to interact as much as possible with us but also with your fellow students because um, in the online environment you get as much out of it as you put into it so it's really um, important to see this as um, a remote 
way of interacting with your student cohort and your, um, you know, your lecturer. But if you actually put in that time and effort to interact, then um, I think you're able to get a lot more out of your own reflections and um, to engage with the content a lot more um, thoroughly and therefore um, have gained greater impact for your own practice and your own service and so on. Yeah, and I, I will just add too that we we scaffold assessments. Um, we start with what we call a low state stakes assessment. So it's particularly useful if you're returning to study and you haven't written an essay in a long time. We start with the low, you know, 10% weighting assessments and then try and give you as much feedback as possible so that you can build on that. Um, we also run these webinars that Julie sort of talked about. Often they're around the assessments. So, um, and I know I've probably been doing them for about two years now. Definitely I can see uh, an improvement in people's grades and improvement in their writings when they attend those webinars because we basically give lots of very specific instructions around how to write your essays and how to structure them and what we're looking for, which is it's kind of like a recipe, which is helpful. Um, and the only other thing I was going to say is that we... Uh, we've been very fortunate. We've been an online, fully online course since 2014. So we managed to avoid uh, a lot of the frantic COVID um, struggles that a lot of universities had to throw a lot of their stuff online when um, they were face to face. Uh, we've got very well established uh, programs that were not thrown together in sort of very rapidly. And we speak, Julie and I speak from a place of knowledge, having taught in undergrad where we did have to put things together very uh. But, you know, it's not the same as when you've had a, a significant course um, developed for an online platform. So uh, very much can categorically vouch that our program is very much strengthened by the fact that we've been doing this pre-COVID. We've got, we've got a very good system there. And there's a lot of supports as well within the university for uh, a return to academic writing and referencing the things that often worry postgraduate students at the in the initial initial stages. Um, you know, so, so support, um, you know, literature searching, um, those sorts of things. So there's a lot of support for students um, to help you get started and more confident with those skills. And if you're feeling a little bit rusty with them, so. <laughs> We understand what that's like. Um, in terms of the costs, so this is um, the way the costings are sorted. It's always based on just a one year full time. It's all very confusing. Um, so that's why you've got the same costs here for master's and graduate diploma because they um, they can only provide first a full year. Uh, so the, the cost of a graduate certificate, this is the full out out-of-pocket costs here because it doesn't exceed more than a year. Um, this isn't far off the graduate diploma, it's slightly more than that. And the master's is more than that again. But as you can see, the um, savings is significant. A master's is significantly more than $21,000. It's because it's over four to six years. So it's quite a long time. So the CSP is uh, a, a very good thing to have. Is this your major one? Oh, this is me again. Yes, yeah, so I already preempted some of this in terms of um, help with academic writing, um, referencing, as say, literature searches as well. Oh, your screen has, oh, you've gone through to academic skills units. So um, you'd have to scroll down, yes, a little bit. So help with um, study skills, um, support within the library system. I don't know if there's any more that we could see. No, there's not a whole lot we can actually see on that, Louise. Um, but there is um, a lot of help available um, and it's available um, at convenient times as well. So you can call, you can text, um, you can arrange online face-to-face -face chats with um, academic skills staff. There's also free counselling, which is available to ACU students, um, you know, stress and life um, um, can get in the way of study. So often there may be some help that's required with, um, you know, managing your commitments and, um, you know, managing your time and organisation. So we do have access for all our students to uh, counselling sessions as needed. Um, disability support, um, if you um, 
have um, a health condition or particular circumstances which make it difficult for you to um, access learning, um, then you may well be eligible for um, accommodations. And that may be something that you wish to discuss with a disability support um, advisor. So it doesn't have to be what you might traditionally think of as a disability, but there may be circumstances which are um, impacting on you. Um, there's also student advocacy available, um, which may be advocacy with, um, with um, university processes. Um, so that may well be um, that you um, uh, wishing to appeal something or that you're wishing to understand um, university processes so you can actually use um, the advocacy service to help you negotiate um, understanding those services. There are particular supports for our um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students so um, that is something that if that's relevant to you that you may wish to access because we um, very much value um, uh, any um, uh, postgraduate students who are coming to us from um, an Indigenous background. So we really want to support you um, to ensure your success and also that there are scholarships available through ACU. So it's worthwhile having a look um, through those because, again, they're not necessarily all um, uh, kind of straightforward academic kind of scholarships. Um, there may be other aspects. So ACU is very much in terms of looking at the whole person and um, acknowledging um, commitments to your community and so on. So that it's quite broad in terms of um, supporting um, students to come on board and to um, stay on board with us. So we do have a broad range of support services there. So it's just worthwhile having a glance through those um, because some may be relevant to you, even if at first glance you didn't think they were. So there's a lot of support there for students across a broad range of, of issues. Thank you. Um, I've got a, an example here of a, a Leo page. I hope it, so Leo, for anyone who's used an online platform, Form before it's actually Moodle. We just call it Leo, but it's it's Moodle. Um, hopefully this works. Julie, you have to tell me. Is this? Yep, I can see you're going into Leo there. Okay, so this is um, health promotion and social inclusion. So this is a unit um, I currently teach now, and you can see it's fairly straightforward. Actually, you've got you know this tile here is where you would upload an assessment, and you would go back. Um, and looking for feedback. So you would click in, you know, have a look at the, the particular feedback that you get. If you want special consideration, there's, um, you know, documents there. And then here is where we communicate. So I'll post um, uh, comments and links and things like that. These are the Zoom sessions that we run. Um, and then here is an example. Where I'll just go to module two. Um, so this is how you are because I've been in here before yeah sure because of the last page um so you can see here this is how you would take yourself through the learning and then you move to the next page um and then you can see there's videos um you know that sort of stuff so this is just an example I guess to show you what it's um what it would be what it looks like it's fairly intuitive so it's quite simple to use we are moving eventually moving across to canvas which is another um, platform. And the library, the library's got some really good um, services to offer people. I think they offer a lot of stuff that students don't know about and they're very good with searches. And um, so beyond just using the library as a way of downloading an article, they've got lots of, um, you know, things that you can book a librarian, you can, um, you know, help get them to help you with how to do a search strategy, how to find the articles, that sort of stuff. So. Um, they're very, very helpful. They do things like EndNote sessions. Um, so EndNote is a referencing system. So if you want to, um, you know, use EndNote to help reference your assignments, they can show you how to, to do that, how to create an EndNote library. They're very helpful. Um, that's, is that your major one? This is your, no, yes. 
uh, how to apply. Okay, so um, have a look at the ACU website um, for the postgraduate um, studies and uh, find which, oh, are you going to click on that? So this is the graduate diploma in mental health nursing. So this is an example of what you'll see on the website. So you've got all the information in there for 2023. You can see it's offered online, as we've said. So there's a little bit more information in there about um, you know, CSPs mentioned there. Course details here, the course structure. So you can see all the um, the, the different units, the um, expectations um, for uh, entering and exiting. As we said, these are the um, core um, units and then um, for the different streams. So it's all available on the, the website to have a look at, see a little bit more information. But do be aware, as Louise said, of following the, the um, certificate diploma masters um, plotting your units um, because you want to make sure that you have a clear um, exit point if needed. Um, and be, to actually ensure that you're meeting all those expectations. So there's a, there's a lot of information there to, to have a look at and again, covers um, you know, how to apply, um, fees, things that we've already mentioned before, like scholarships and so on. So that's the place to start um, and making sure that you meet those entry requirements. As we've said, it's very specific for mental health nurses, but um, it's a lot more general for the allied health stream and and if you have doubts, then just, just ask the question. But you do obviously need um, an existing um, bachelor degree um, and that you are actually working with people who have mental health condition. So um, then you need to make sure you've got all the required application documents. Um, I'm sure that's reasonably substantial, but Louise will be able to, um, you know, to, to help you if you have questions around that as well. And then apply on the website. So everything's online these days in terms of applying um, and, you know, finding out more information. Um, but um, you can still email people um, and clarify um, if you if you're motivated if you really would like to um, study at a postgraduate level in mental health then please just ask the questions um, check out the information do you meet those expectations if you don't quite then please just still ask yeah yeah so you just need a cv the stem which speaks to your um, statement of employment uh, and transcripts, academic transcripts, you know, from undergraduate or any other postgraduate studies that you've done, uh, and APRA registration if that requires, if, if you're in, in the nursing stream. Um, obviously, if you're an OT or anyone else who is APRA um, registered, then that's fine to include that too. Um, so the important date, so this semester, two, sorry, semester one commences on the 27th of February and ends on the 25th of June. And I mean, we've got semester two dates there. We would ask that you enrol for semester one and two units. It just helps us plan um, staffing and that sort of stuff. You can change your preferences, it's not a problem. It's just helpful. Uh, and I think it can help avoid fees too, if you miss it. Uh, I think they uh, they may charge you a fee, a late enrollment fee if you, if you miss it. So it's a good idea to just do it. Uh, the census dates, I'm not sure that they matter so much anymore. Do they, Julie? Because of the they only matter in terms of um, your academic transcripts. So as long as you withdraw before the end of week 12, yeah. you um, do not receive, you, your grade will, um, will not necessarily um, be acknowledged as a fail. So if you withdraw within the semester, you would still have to pay your fees for the semester because you have um, withdrawn late after um, census date, but your um, unit is not necessarily, um, if you withdraw within the semester, the unit does not count as a fail. Exactly. So previously it did. Yeah, so there's no academic penalty. Um, no, no. So if you withdraw before the 31st of March or the 31st of August, depending on what semester, there's no financial or academic penalty. Mm. That's the importance of the census date. Yes. Um, all right, so that concludes our um, presentation. If anyone has any questions, feel free to 
uh, email us, probably email me, unless you've got allied health specific questions to email Julie. Um, pref preferably don't call. I <laughs> tend not to be uh, very good with the phone calls, but definitely um, email me and I'll get back to you straight away. I'm usually pretty quick with that. Um, but yeah, if anyone has any questions who's here right now, feel free to put yourself on off mute or write them in the chat. We'll wait a minute or so and then otherwise, um, if no one has any questions, thank you for joining us and hopefully we'll see you next year. Yeah, we'd love to. We'd love to have you join our student group. Mm -hmm.